डियर शॉर्ट हैंड राइटर्स दिस इज इंग्लिश शॉर्ट हैंड डिक्टेशन नंबर वन फोर्टी एंड द डिक्टेशन स्पीड इज वन फोर्टी वर्ड्स पर मिनट रेडी स्टार्ट वेमेन मेक अप हाफ ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स पॉपुलेशन एंड येट दे आर स्टिल लार्जली एक्सक्लूडेड फ्रॉम पॉलिटिक्स एंड डिसीजन मेकिंग पावर द वर्ल्ड इज नॉट येट ऑन ट्रैक टू अचीव जेंडर इक्वलिटी इन पॉलिटिक्स बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस डेकेड द गुड न्यूज इज दैट वेमेन आर स्टेडली टेकिंग अप मोर स्पेस इन गवर्नमेंटल लीडरशिप अराउंड द वर्ल्ड विद मोर एंड मोर ऑफ देम सिक्योरिंग सीट्स इन नेशनल पार्लियामेंट्स एंड ए गुड नंबर ऑफ कंट्रीज इम्प्लीमेंटिंग पार्लियामेंट्री कोटाज टू एंश्योर फेयर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वेमेन although this representation has reached a significant milestone the increase of women's representation is not yet happening fast enough at the current rate it will take another 50 years before we can achieve gender parity in parliaments around the world the covid-19 pandemic had detrimental effects on women's representation with national parliamentary elections being postponed in close to 20 countries gendered socio economic inequalities being exacerbated and online violence against women being more widespread than ever however there were positive trends in 2020 such as remote technologies that can help in balancing the caring responsibilities with political career aspirations electoral gender quotas applied in many countries have had positive effects on gender parity parliaments with quotas have elected 12% more women to single and lower chambers progress is being made but parliaments must be more open to women madam this is not an occasion to trade allegations and i am not going to deal with this matter as the matter is before the court or before the various committees of parliament and they will come with their own conclusions however i would like to say that corruption is a multifaceted problem therefore we as a nation have to find practical and effective means to tackle it and this is not merely the responsibility of the central government the state governments are responsible for over 50% of the total national spending and the conduct of the state governments which is the most common way people come in contact with government is essential the responsibility of the states there is anger in the country there is anger about the misuse of public offices therefore both at the center and the states it is our obligation to clean up the system of governance and to ensure that we leave behind for our children and grandchildren a system of public administration which is capable of meeting the challenge of the 21st century In my address to the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort I listed a number of areas where in the next couple of months I would like our government to take initiative and I stand committed to whatever I promised from the ramparts of the Red Fort Madam corruption sources are numerous until the early 90s the biggest single source of corruption was the industrial licensing system the import controls and the foreign exchange controls the liberalization that we brought about has ended that part of this corruption story another major part of the corruption was the rates of taxation which were so exorbitant that people were tempted to enter into corruption practices to reduce their tax liabilities we have worked to simplify and streamline the taxation system and now there is less scope for corruption as far as taxation matters are concerned even though i recognize that a residual element is still there and we have to work together through very mechanisms including goods and services tax which is now in public domain and which is an obligation which our country must fulfill if it wants to move forward but there are many other areas where corruption still persists we have to tackle this problem from various angles 
there are central government programs administered by the state governments but there are leakages therefore we must find ways and means of reforming the system of public administration so that these leakages can be plucked malfunctioning of public distribution has been widely commented upon we must therefore devise new methodologies to ensure that public distribution system becomes free of mal practices this is an obligation which we can discharge only with full cooperation of the state governments madam yet another source of corruption is government contracts wherever government contracts are given they are given in a manner which creates suspicion that something is going wrong therefore we need a public procurement act as some other countries have to streamline our contracting mechanisms in a manner in which there will be less scope for corruption in future in certain areas greater competition itself will reduce the scope for corruption but we still know that there are areas of infrastructure where competition can at best be only limited there is scope for regulation in the last couple of years we have put in place regulatory mechanisms but the functioning of these regulatory mechanisms especially with regard to the management of the infrastructure is something which requires attention that is yet another area where we must find ways and means to streamline the regulatory system so that there is less scope for corruption the house has my assurance that we will work in full public glare to fulfill what we have promised i have set up a group to look at the scope for reducing the amount of discretion that ministers have at the center this group has made some important suggestions they will be considered by the cabinet and we will put in place a mechanism to reduce the scope for misuse of discretionary power or to eliminate discretionary power wherever it can be done without detriment to public interest or achievement of public good madam it is in the context of corruption that the last few weeks have been momentous developments shri anna hazare has gone on fast his plea is that we should adopt the jan lokpal bill that has been drafted by them the background of this whole exercise is well known to this august house we have sittings together with the five representatives of shri anna hazare including himself who met with our five representatives and a large measure of agreement was reached with regard to the shape of the lokpal bill that we should have on certain matters there was disagreement and that disagreement could not be resolved and therefore we have referred that matter for consideration of all parties and the consensus was that the government should come with its own version of the bill and various parties would then reflect on what to do with that bill we discharged that obligation we submitted that bill to parliament it has now been referred to the standing committee Mr Chairman sir I thank you very much for allowing me to take part in the discussion relating to the customs act first of all I welcome the initiative taken by the government to amend this act it always comes to my mind that whenever we talk about customs this arm of the government does not only generate revenues for the country but also protects the security integrity and unity of the country it keeps a watch on the nation's economy and protects the domestic interests i must also thank the government for bringing out this amendment to recover taxes running into thousands of crores of rupees by making this amendment to customs act the specified customs officers would be recognized for assessment of import duty with retrospective effect i am also sure that with this amendment the customs tax evaders will not get benefited at the cost of exchequer on mere technical grounds these tax evaders were taking shelter under the umbrella that the notices issued by the officers are not valid because the officers who issued such notices are not competent to take action against such customs tax evaders so this amendment will definitely take care of the need of the hour to see that the customs tax evaders do not get the opportunity again on this flimsy ground 
every country in the world has got a strong customs department and stringent rules we should also strengthen and tighten our customs department it is not that we doubt our own officers in the customs department we should make rules which will ensure that only the goods that deserve to be imported reach indian ports and airports india is a country which is facing dumping of all products from all over the world whether it is required in our land or not